We can't really talk about kinetics without considering half-life. So half-life is the time required for half of reactants to react. Uh, you probably learned about this in math, or maybe you've heard about it when we talk about radioactive decay or um, uh, like dating fossils and things like that. You're looking at that, the half-life of carbon, how long, we know exactly how long it takes for um, half of one of the isotopes to decompose, and so you can figure out how old things are based on their half-life. So when we look at half-life, um, if we had you know a graph like this, all right, we have pressure or you do concentration versus time here. If you started off with 150, half of 150 is 75. So you would go down to 75, draw a line over, and then drop it down, and then read off the graph what the half-life was. So that's how long it takes for half of it to decompose. Um, for a first-order process, that's really easy. It's just ln of 2 over k is equal to the half-life. Um, it doesn't even depend on the initial concentration, which is why it's it, um, the radioactive decay of, of um, I'm sorry, the decay of carbon um, for dating fossils and things is a first order process. So it doesn't really matter how much you start it with, the, the half-life is always going to be the same. So you can see it takes this long for it to decompose to halfway, um, then to get down to 37 and a half, so half of this is the same amount of time, and so on and so forth. So where do we get this equation from? Um, it comes from, if we look at our first order reaction, Right, and we had this whole thing where we had ln of a at some time is negative k times t plus ln of a initial. So at half-life, at the t one-half, right, the um, a at some time is just half of whatever you started with. That's all we're saying. And so now I can just take this and plug it in over here. So I have, instead of ln of a at, at, at time t, I have ln of one half of a initial, oops, initial, there we go, is negative, so I just got rid of a variable, pretty much, ln of a initial. Um, I can subtract this, subtract this, a initial. And so I end up, I can combine those, I can natural log of one half of A initial minus the natural log of A initial is negative K times T. Don't worry, you don't ever have to derive this. Just want to show you where that equation came from. Now I can separate this. I get natural log of a half um, plus ln of my initial minus ln of the initial. So there's a log rule that says if you have ln of one half times, you know, ln of x times y is the same as the ln of x plus the ln of y. So that's why I split up my log here. If you're not into log rules, don't worry. You just skip this part. And then these guys cancel, and I end up with natural log of one half equals negative k times t. I can do the same thing and split that log of natural log of one minus natural log of two. Um, since I have 1 divided by 2, that's the same as natural log of 1 minus natural log of 2. This is negative k times t, and natural log of 1 is just 0. And if I'm just solving for the t, I can divide this by negative k, negative k. So I get t, which is the half-life. It's just a subscript telling you which time are you talking about. t 1 half is just ln of 2 over k. So that's where I got that equation from. So ln of 2 is just a constant. That's just um, 0.693, yeah, ln of 2. If you do that in your calculator, you just get 0 0.693. You can remember that, or you can just remember ln of 2. All right, so that's for first order. You can derive similar half-life equations for zeroth and second order. I'm not going to go through it, but you can certainly do that. Same, follow the same process, just plug in um, to a different equation. So let's see if we can find uh, answer these questions. So if we have a first order uh, reaction, estimate the half-life for this reaction. So if I started off with 0.1, I want to go down to half of that, which is like 0.05. And then I draw a line over to where it hits the graph over here. And then I drop it down. And that half-life, T1 half, is about 340, 350 um, seconds. And I'll go with 340 seconds because that's what the book said. OK. So I would give you anywhere between three, 300 and 400 when you're reading off of a graph. 
And now if this is first order, great, then I know, if I know half-life, I know the K. Right? I know the, the rate constant. So they want us to find the rate constant. So the half-life, T one half is ln of two over K, which means K is just ln of two over the half-life, right? So if I know one, I know the other. And that's how you rearrange it. Multiply both sides by K, divide by the T one half. So if I want to solve for k, I can just say k is ln of 2, which is 0 0.693 over 340 seconds. And what do we get there? About 2.0 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds to the negative 1. So that's our half-life. So sometimes in the problem, they'll give you the K and they'll ask you for the half-life. Sometimes they'll give you the half-life and they'll ask you for the K. Um, so in this next problem, they say the reaction's first order, great. Uh, and they say, what's the rate law? So a solution at, oh, sorry, a solution originally at 0.6 molar um, hydrogen peroxide is found to be 0.075 molar after 54 minutes. Find the rate constant. And then the second part is once you know K, can you find the half-life? Okay, so since it's first order, I know we can always use this equation, right? We always have natural log of A at some time, at some time is equal to negative K times T plus natural log of A initial. Okay, so we have that equation. We're going to memorize that equation. I'm going to give you a whole list of equations that you need to memorize. And I know that the solution originally at 0.6, so that's my A initial. And the A at some time is 0 0.075. Remember, at some time, it's always less than whatever you started with. Your time is 54 minutes. You can convert that to seconds if you want to. Um, we're looking for K. K is just going to be 1 over minutes then, whenever you find it, if you keep that in minutes, which is fine. All right, so we can plug all this in. Whoops. I have natural log of A at some time, so I have the natural log natural log of A at some time is what natural log of 0.75 is equal to negative K, that's what I'm looking for, times 54 minutes plus the natural log of A initial, which is 0.075. All right, so you can pause the video and, and work this out, but this one should be um, negative 2.590, negative 54K, plus another negative 0.5108. So you're going to add the point 0.5108, add it over here, 5108, and on this side you end up with negative 2.0794, something about that, is negative 54k, and then just divide by negative 54, and you end up with a k that's about 0 0.0. 39 minutes to the negative 1, or 1 over minutes for your k. And then once you know k, you can figure out the half-life. So t1 half is just ln of 2 over k. And your answer is going to be in, um, in minutes, because you have 1 over 1 over minutes. So you end up with about 18 minutes as your half-life. So that's a pretty common type of problem. Um, the other variations, like I said before, sometimes they'll give you the half-life and you have to solve for the k first and then use the k in the integrated rate law. Uh, for a second order process, you can derive the half-life again, just like we did last time, and you get this. And so this, this final summary table, which is also in your um, exam study guide, um, these are all the, the, yeah, the integrated rate laws that you need to know. 
um, what do you have to plot to get a straight line? And then um, what do you want, uh, how, do, how, how can you figure out the half-life? So I would remember, definitely memorize the first order one, LNO2 over K. You're going to see that one. That's like the most common. Um, but you should know all these equations and how to use them, how to rearrange them. This is where they came from. You integrate all these and you, and you get the integrated rate loss.